Okay, so in this video, we're going to calculate the Taylor polynomial of degree 5 at the point pi over 3 for the function cosine of x. And there's three important points there that you need to remember when calculating the Taylor polynomial. It's the degree of the terms that you want, so in our case, the fifth degree. So therefore, the degree is n, so n is 5. So we need to substitute n is 5. And the point we're calculating at is pi over 3. And the variable for the point is usually a. So a could be equal to pi over 3. And our function is cosine of x. And very important to be familiar with cosine of x because we're going to need to differentiate it five times. So the generic formula for a Taylor polynomial is this one here. So tn of x. So in our case, it will be t5 of x, so fifth degree Taylor polynomial, equals f of a. So basically that just means the value of the function at the point a, which in our case is pi over 3. So that's the function at pi over 3. And then we've got a series of these terms here. So we've got first derivative of a, and a is pi over 3, so put pi over 3 in there for the a. x minus a, which is again pi over 3, and then divided by 1 factorial. Second term you can see here, we've got the second derivative at a, which is pi over 3 x minus pi over 3 squared this time and then divided by 2 factorial and then the next one you see we've got the third derivative divided by 3 factorial and then x minus a cubed so there's a pattern forming here where we've got the 3 the 3 and the 3 4 4 and 4 2 2 and 2 and so on so i've done one here for a generic uh, part of the series the nth derivative divided by n factorial x minus a to the power of n so there we can just substitute our 5s for n, because that's the last term we're going to use. And all the a's will become pi over 3. OK, so first of all, we're going to deal with the function cosine of x. So we're going to differentiate the function cosine of x five times and find the values of each derivative of pi over 3. Pi over 3, you may also, if you don't want to know the radians, you might prefer the degrees, in which case it's 60 degrees. So the function is cosine of x, and the function at pi over 3 is a half. So cosine of pi over 3 equals a half. So that takes care of that first value. So now we've got the first derivative. Well, the first derivative of cosine, let's just bring these up here. Nice little, because there's a pattern for me here, so I'll just go through that. So the first derivative of cosine is minus sine. A minus sine of pi over 3 is minus root 3 over 2. The third derivative is minus cosine. Well, cosine we've already calculated is a half. So minus cosine is minus a half. Third derivative is sine of x. And sine of x, as we calculated here, at minus is minus root 3 over 2. So therefore, we've got root 3 over 2. For sine of x. Then the fifth, the fourth derivative is the derivative of sine, which is cosine, and then the cosine value we already calculated at the beginning, which is a half. So cosine of pi over three we know is a half. And the fifth derivative is minus sine over x, and the fifth derivative we see is the same as the first derivative, which is minus sine. So therefore, it's the same value as well. So that's minus root three over two. So there is a pattern there, if you look carefully. So we've got a half minus root 3 over 2, minus a half plus root 3 over 2, plus a half minus root 3 over 2. So all these follow a sequence of 4. So this half is then repeated here, and then the minus root 3 over 2 is repeated here. So if you went to the sixth derivative, you'd see that the sixth derivative will be a minus a half, and the same here, because obviously we're working out the same value. So you've got cosine minus sine co minus cosine sine. And then you've got cosine minus sine. Then 6 and 7 will be minus, uh, minus cosine and sine. So that's the pattern there. So the next stage, what we're going to do is we're going to substitute pi over 3 for all the a values into our formula. So, so the fifth degree Taylor polynomial. So basically what we've done here is just put pi over 3 where all the a's were. So we've got f of pi over 3 plus first derivative of pi over 3 
x minus pi over 3 and so on and so on and so on. So it's good to do this one step at a time because then you can break it down without making any silly mistakes. And it's very easy to do that when trying to do too much on a Taylor polynomial in one go. So you see here 5th degree of the fifth um, derivative to pi over 3. We've calculated it here. So all you're going to do is take that away and put a minus root 3 over 2 divided by 5 factorial. Same for the fourth one, a half. So you're just going to put a half in where this, this one was. So the next thing as well to think of is the factorials. And the factorials, 5 factorial is 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5, which is 120. 4 factorial is 1 times 2 times 3 times 4, which is 24. And 3 is 6. And 2 factorial is 2. 1 factorial is 1. So next we're going to substitute the derivatives and the factorials into the function and see what we end up with there. So, the value at pi over 3, we calculated was a half. So just show you where that was. So that's here, that's a half. So that then goes in at the first term. Now the first derivative, go back to where we calculated it, was minus root 3 over 2. So then we put minus root 3 over 2, and then multiply it by 1 factorial, which is 1. The x minus pi over 3 just stays as it is. There's no need to multiply any of these out. We just stay like that. Then the second derivative we calculated was minus a half. That's there. So then back to our formula. So minus a half, there it goes. It's sitting in there nicely. And multiply the denominator by 2 because that's 2 factorial. Then x minus pi over 3 squared. The third derivative is root 3 over 2. There's the root 3 over 2 gone there. And that multiplies by 6, because that was 3 factorial. Again, the x minus pi over 3 cubed just stays in there. The fourth derivative was a half. So the fourth derivative, let's go back here, here we are. There's the half, and there's the 4 factorial. So a half times 24, x minus pi over 3, power of 4. And then the fifth derivative was minus root 3 over 2. There's the minus root 3 over 2. And there's the 120, which is the 5 factorial. And again, the x minus pi over 3 to the 5 just stays. So we can simplify this up a little bit more. And then we can see here the half will stay. There's nothing to simplify out on that. The minus can change that plus sign to the minus. So that's why we've got the minus there. The root 3 can be then on the top on its own. With then the x minus pi over 3 we can bring to the numerator. And then the denominator is 2 times 1, which is 2. So that's how we get to this one here. The next term we've got, again, the minus sign can just flip the plus sign. The denominator is 2 times 2, which is 4. And we can bring this x minus pi over 3 squared onto the top. And then we'd have 1 times this here, x minus pi over 3 squared, which is just x minus pi over 3 squared. So then we would end up with this one, which is minus x minus pi over 3 squared over 4. The next term we've got is root 3 divided by 12. If you multiply the top and bottom by root 3 and then divide through everything by 3, you'll end up with just 4 root 3 on the bottom. So you make a nice, neat and tidy polynomial with just x minus pi over 3 cubed on the top. Then the next one, we've got 1 over 2 times 24. So there's 2 times 24 is 48. So that's the denominator taken care of. And in the numerator, I've just brought this x minus pi over 3 to the 4 to the top to the numerator. And there it is. And again here with the last term, minus root 3. So the minus can just flip the plus sign. So that's the plus sign, uh, the negative sign there. Then the root 3 is over 240. So what again, what we can do is we can multiply the top and bottom by root 3. So then we'll end up with 240 root 3 on the denominator and 3 on the numerator, and then divide everything by 3. So 3 divided by 3 would give us 1, so we can just cancel that out. And then 240 divided by 3 is 80. So then we're left with 80 root 3 in denominator. Again, nice and neat. x minus pi over 3 to the power of 5. OK, so this is our Taylor polynomial for cosine of x at pi over 2, but pi over 3. OK. Thanks for watching, and as always, leave any comments below, and please subscribe. Thanks very much.